Gaming Bolt presents 15 video game bosses that can kill you with their cheap moves. The summation of everything the game has taught you and the grand climactic moment. The boss is supposed to be challenging, but there's challenging and then there's, well, there's just cheap. We're defining cheap bosses as those big bads who don't seem to play by the rules set by the game, and pull something that you couldn't have possibly expected upon your first encounter, or just take an unreasonable amount of memorizing to be able to take them on. When you get sucker punched by an out of nowhere attack and have to restart all over, you just want to punch your fist through a wall. That kind of cheap. Did we miss any good examples of bad bosses? Share yours in the comment section below. Death Egg Robot Sonic 4 Episode 1 While we'd all like to forget this game and pretend that Sonic Mania is the real Sonic 4, Sega did play around with the idea of episodic titles using that loaded name. The final boss lifts the iconic Death Egg robot nearly wholesale from Sonic 2. Nearly. When on the final hit, the Mad Doctor will stomp one more time and crumble the entire floor beneath the player with no warning. Unless they somehow know when and how to intercept that attack, they're back to the start of the boss rush. Alma, Ninja Gaiden Black Ninja Gaiden Black is one of the pillars of the character action genre, though there's more than a few issues with the game that hold it back. Difficulty spikes like the infamous Alma immediately come to mind, with the fiend's fast movement and guard-breaking attacks demanding way, way more from the player than almost any other moment in the game, let alone in the run-up. Silver the Hedgehog, Sonic 06 if you managed to hang around far enough into Sonic the Hedgehog 2006 and you've made it to the silver boss fight, telling you this might be no use. But for those of us who dodged that bullet, Sonic comes up against the psychic Trunks ripoff early in the game, who can grab Sonic telekinetically at any moment and throw him against a wall. Players are lucky if that kills them, because the game can be easily softlocked with being tossed near a wall, where they'll infinitely collect a single ring and be unable to shake the hit stun before he attacks again. Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. Old Iron Mike Tyson stands at the end of a long gauntlet of challengers in the classic NES title, Punch-Out, and toppling him would mean you're the world champion. But taking down the big guy has been a task that all but the most dedicated have failed. Tyson is a fight of attrition, with the player needing to stay on their toes and away from his one-hit knockout fist for a couple of rounds before he begins to show real openings. Psycho Mantis, Metal Gear Solid. The freaky Psychomantis was the first time that director Hideo Kojima really got the chance to get inside the heads of his players when he pulled some pretty unique tricks for the first time using the cutting edge technology of the PS1. Before players knew the trick to beating him with swapping the controller ports, he could read and dodge every last move that was made, ending more than a few players long before the codec tipped them off. Bed of Chaos, Dark Souls. There is only one thing that you can expect from a Dark Souls game besides having you died burned into your retinas and the TV panel, and that's that the game will be completely fair. So when the Bed of Chaos showed up in Dark Souls, and the randomly and suddenly crumbling terrain and limited space to navigate against the sweeping attacks of the boss knocked you into the pit again and again, it's one of the few times that Dark Souls didn't feel like it kept its promise. Armadillo Generator, Ninja Gaiden 2 Ninja Gaiden 2 didn't quite have an Alma moment, where any singular boss was totally overpowered and brutal, but what the original Xbox 360 release did have was the Armadillo Generator boss at the end of the Flying Fortress Daedalus. The relatively straightforward boss fight doesn't give players any reason to expect trickery, and has some key weaknesses like projectiles to the forehead right up until the boss dies. Until you somehow thought that holding block to use your sword to negate a giant explosion would be needed on your own, you were going to do that boss once again. The cheap trick was removed on any future revisions of the game, such as the PS3 Sigma remake. Jinpachi Mishima, Tekken 5 The Mishima family history is a complicated one. Someone ruined Sunday dinner with their choice of hat, you threw me off a cliff, what have you. But the oldest living member, Jinpachi Mishima really takes the cake. Designed to eat away at quarters, his moves stun you constantly, he has huge damaging combos, and worst of all, he'll fire his lasers from his belly which can take away half of your health in one hit. Sometimes he'll even spam them twice to catch any sidestepping. It takes some cheap moves to be king of the Iron Fist, it seems. Alpha 152, Dead or Alive 4 
Dead or Alive 4 doesn't get the respect it really deserves as a highly technical fighting game. Regardless of the discussion surrounding the series, like Jinpachi, Alpha 152 is cheap by design and meant to eat non-existent quarters and patience. If you can manage to keep up with her and avoid grabs or counters that could take away half of your health, she can still teleport around the arena to catch you off guard. Nitrous Oxide Crash Team Racing Crash Team Racing stands even today as a fantastic kart racer and the best on the PS1, but the ending of the story mode was anything but fair. Nitrous Oxide, the alien that would turn Crash's entire planet into a parking garage, doesn't play by any of the rules the player does. The alien ship will refuse to spin out and slow down against even the most powerful items. He'll take off ahead of the green light and tosses out multiple items at a single time. Whoa, indeed. Master Core Super Smash Bros. 4 While the core Master Hand battle may have become somewhat boring by the time Super Smash Bros. reached the Nintendo 3DS and the Wii U, but the addition of Master Core probably wasn't the way to fix the problem. The various forms of the Master Core all have their own particular brand of cheap to work with, including the Beast with its jump, the Swords with their energy balls, and the Shadow with the game just not playing by the usual rules with regards to weight. The terrible Master Fortress on the Wii U game is full of garbage traps with no chance to retry the battle without replaying classic mode from the beginning. Cacletta Soul Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga plus Bowser's Minions The climax of Mario & Luigi's hilarious RPG romp through the Bean Bean Kingdom is anything but funny, with the two brothers going toe-to-toe -to -toe against the fierce Boletta, a twisted form of their longtime foe, taken over by a cunning witch. When the two are taken by surprise and consumed by the monstrous abomination, they are taken on the verge of death and come against the Cacletta Soul itself. Players begin the battle with 1 HP and if they can't act quickly enough to react to any of the 6 attacks that she can throw out, the battle will be over before it even begins. Sans Undertale The crux of Undertale and what made it such a hit to begin with came from the fact that players didn't need to end anyone, though how to do so wasn't always completely apparent. Later in the game, when you come against fan-favorite Sans, a goofy skeleton who's helped you numerous times, he'll beg you to spare him. In a total left-field move that only the biggest trust issues would have foretold, actually obliging him will give him the critical opening he needed to end your game. Shao Kahn Mortal Kombat 9 The terrible ruler of the Outrealms, Shao Kahn carries with him the aura of being a totally bad dude. In any of his appearances throughout the series, but most annoyingly in Mortal Kombat 9, his defense, lack of hit stun, huge health pool, and screen reaching attacks make him a chore to fight, forcing many players to resort to cheap tricks to succeed. Kunino Sagiri, Persona 4 The investigation team had their most personal mission yet when they went in after Namatame to rescue the hero's sister. And the end of the Heaven Dungeon is topped off with a battle against the believed killer transformed into the monstrous hippie Kuninino Sigiri. The battle goes the way the player expects it to for most of the run, but late in the game, once you've got the Sigiri worn down, without warning, it will take control of your entire party besides the main character. With little hope to avoid all of their powerful, diverse attacks with anything you have on you when you don't know that this is coming, it's hard to feel that this death was the player's fault. And that about does it for this video. If you enjoyed what you watched and want to see more from Gaming Bolt, you can always hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon next to it. That way you will never miss any of our videos.